I will never tell you that your feelings are wrong, but what I will tell you is to identify where they're coming from and go and spread joy to somebody. Like the best thing you can do, and, and if you don't feel that way, then I can tell you this industry is not for you. Like period, I'll just tell you that right now. If you don't like making other people feel good, then I don't know what you're doing here, right? Because that's what this is about. Yes, it is to make money. Absolutely, duh. I am not here for free, right? I'm here to hustle and make money. But if you, the way we make money is by changing people's lives and pouring into people. And yeah, like, like ask for help. If you're ever down, if you're ever out, number one, ask for help. Number two, don't live there. You are made for so much more you're not perfect. There are days I sit in my beanbag and I cry. Like I will sit and cry because I feel defeated. I feel discouraged. I feel, I will be honest. I will be completely transparent with you right now. I called Stephanie and cried today because I'm like 20 people have turned in their point sheets for our beach trip. I've spent $6,000 on a beach house and we have 4,300 people on our team and I bawled and I thought, no, I can turn this into a positive or I can turn this into a negative. And I'm super excited that 20 people are excited about this trip. And you decide, you decide how you react to the things that, that God brings in and, and the obstacles and you decide how you view them. Okay. So if you're down, don't live there. Phone a friend. Um, if you're down in life, if you're down in your business, but the number one thing I can tell you is go and look for something positive. Like right before I got on this, I'm like, okay, so I called Stephanie, I got out my emotions, I took a shower and I was like thinking of all these things I wanted to tell y'all and things I wanted to inspire y'all with. Right. And then what did I do? I was like, you know, what? I'm going to go watch my kids play in the sprinklers for five minutes. And instead of coming in here and just being like in my own head, I was like, all right, I'm going to walk outside do that. Give yourself, um, grace, give yourself some grace, reach out. Don't have so much pride that you're afraid to say I'm struggling. I'm in my own way because a good friend and a good leader is going to tell you, I understand how you feel, but here's why you're feeling this way or help you through it. And then you can move um, to the next spot in life, in this industry. This industry is hard. You get told no a lot. You get beat down a lot, period. That's just the way it is. But I want you to think about, um, so when I was in New York, we went and ate at this restaurant and it was called Ellen Stardust. I don't know if any of y'all have ever eaten there, but basically these people, um, these waiters and waitresses, they sing and they're amazing, like phenomenal singers, right? All of them. I mean, you have to be to work there. And it was like something like one in 900 of them will ever even make it to a Broadway edition. Audition, not edition, audition. And I was like, wow. So they were talking about how rare it is and how like stiff the competition is. Like, would you go to work every day and sing your heart out? Like their goal is not to work there for the rest of their life, right? They have a fund where they can get voice lessons and get exposure to coaches and all of this stuff. And I just kept thinking, man, they're singing their heart out. They're giving 110% and their chances are way slimmer than ours of being successful. But man, they show up every single day with a positive attitude. This industry is hard, but it's possible. There's room at the top for everyone. There's not one Dorothy or one Glenda or one person. You know, there's not one spot to audition for. There's room at the top for all of us. There's absolutely no reason why all 78 of us right now on this can't be in the Millionaires Club, period. There's a, statistically speaking, there's not. Will we all make it? No, because some of you will quit on yourself because some of you will look at fear and you will avoid it. And I want you to hear me when I say this. Stop and appreciate where you are instead of worrying about where you're not. If you are so caught up in where you're not, why would God ever bless you with more? If you are so frustrated with where you're not, why is God going? If you can't count your blessings, 
why are you going to get more of them? If you're frustrated because you only got one customer last month, I, I, I really believe this. I believe whether you believe in God or karma or whatever you, the hell you believe in, it's your energy that you put off. If you are not proud and owning where you are, how can you be blessed with more? I have so many things I want to tell y'all. So some of you that don't know my story. Okay. When I was deciding to do this full time, I kept saying like, God, come on, like, let my team take off, let my team take off, let my team take off. I was making $2,800 a month having my daycare after like paying an employee and all this stuff. And I held on so tight to that. And I'm like, I didn't want to let that go. Cause that was for sure money. But like God kept saying, Courtney, trust me. Trust me, and I'm not telling you to quit your job. I'm just giving you an example of when I didn't have faith in, in my journey and where I was at. So I kept saying, trust me. And God was like, or I kept saying, give me more. And God kept saying, trust me. What I realized, and I shit you not, when I closed my daycare, my next check, I had hit a bonus and it was $28,000 for the week. $28,000. And I say that to you very humbly. You know that. I don't ever brag about my money, ever, because I've been knocked down, rock bottom. But God was telling me, you have to trust where you're at. You have to trust what I'm molding you into right now. And I was holding on so tight to moving myself forward. And whatever you're scared of, if you don't face it, if you don't face that fear head on, that fear doesn't go away. And I stopped and I realized that. I'm like, that fear does not go away. The only way to face fear is to do something in direct opposition of that fear. Okay? Follow me on this. If you're afraid, if you're afraid of heights, if you're afraid of snakes, if you're afraid of going live, if you're afraid of being told no, if you're afraid of messaging somebody, I want you to think, how is the only way to face your fear? To do what you're afraid of. To act in direct opposition of what you're afraid of, okay? Guys, that hit me, it still gives me goosebumps because I never thought about that. I never thought, I thought if I'm afraid to fly, then I don't fly right? If I'm afraid of heights, then I don't do that. That's not overcoming your fear. That's not facing your fear. That is running from your fear. If you run from your fear, or you hide from it, you don't eliminate it. And whenever you act or the lack of action because of fear, you will never get the results that you were intended for. You are making fear-based decisions every day. God will not bless fear-based decisions, okay? God doesn't bless small prayers read the book um i can't remember what it's called maybe leanne knows uh the prayer one god honors bold prayers god doesn't honor small prayers like dear lord please let me have the strength to i don't know get my room clean no get off your ass and get your room clean okay like it it, it you have to act bold you have to play bold, pray bold, work bold. If you're not doing those things, you are selling yourself short. You are selling the people around you short. You are selling the people that you're coming into contact with short of the best version of you. You will never fully become the best version of yourself. I don't care what you've been through. There are some people that I'm staring at right now that have been through hell in their life, okay? And you still show up. And you still are putting one foot in front of the other. And I don't personally know how you do it, but you know that that's how you're getting to that next step. I want you to know, this is a, a quote that I read. And it was the most beautiful thing. I'm, I'm trying not to cry because one of you I'm looking at and you're just crying and you're going to have to switch my screen because you're just going to make me cry. The most beautiful things in your life are never going to be on your to-do list. And I want you to think about that. The most beautiful things in your life will never be on your to-do list. And I'm going to tell you a story in a minute. Um, God has perfect timing. You might not be where you thought you should be, but damn it, you're exactly where you ought to be. Okay? And if you don't embrace that and you don't 
face that head on, you will never level up. You will never get to that next level. You will never advance as a person, as a mom, as a friend, whatever that looks like, whatever that may be. But you are right where God wants you. And I promise you, God is trying to teach you something. If you feel like you're going through a rough time or you're questioning why this or why that, God is trying to teach you something. And I'll tell you, he tried to teach me something for three and a half years. And I finally have kind of started to get that lesson, but it takes you opening your eyes and ears and going, okay, like, what, what am I supposed to learn from this? And I had this girl message me one time whenever I lost my job. And it still pisses me off to think about, but she was right. And she goes, I hope with all of this, because I didn't really like have a relationship with her for her to send me this message, but maybe it was God sending her to me. I don't know. Still pissed me off. She said, I don't know if you realize, but you're going through this for a reason. And I hope you've learned something about yourself. And I thought at the time, like, I was done wrong. Like I lost my job. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can Google it. I'm like, I've lost my job. I've been on the news. Like, who are you? Like, what is God trying to teach me? I've been wrong. This is the devil's work, right? No, I learned the biggest lesson in my whole entire life during that, um, during that time. And she was so right right or wrong, she still pissed me off, but she was so right. I didn't realize until years later, I thought that girl messaging me that. And like, she was right because God was trying to teach me something about myself. So I'm going to tell you two stories and then I'll talk logistics with you. Um, I want you to think about this. I want you to think um, if you're a sports fan, okay, I'm a huge sports fan. I don't care what it is. It could be ice skating, whatever, whatever, um, whatever sport you like. How fun is it to go and watch a game and one team gets slaughtered, right? Is that fun? That's not fun to me. I don't know. Maybe it's fun to you and I'm totally off the base, but that's not fun to me. How much fun do you think it is as an athlete if you are showing up to go play in a game and then you know the other team sucks, right? You know they suck. They've never won a game. And you have like, you know, this all-star team. Second string's going to be put in. You're probably not going to practice as hard, right? All, the, all of these things that I'm thinking of, like that's not fun to do and that's not fun to watch for me. And I think of that in these seasons of our life whenever we are going up against things. And I think we are playing the team that's never been beat, right? I am up against that version of whoever that's never been beat, that that's, has the all-star players, that I'm scared. I'm scared. I will never forget in softball. I played softball, and I made all-stars one summer, and I swear it was because the coach felt sorry for me, and he put me into bat because I swear he knew we were going to lose anyways, and we were playing midway. Nobody ever beat midway. Rebecca Brophy was the pitcher, if you know her. I almost peed my pants batting. I didn't even swing. I don't even know where the ball was going. All I could do was stand there and think, please don't pee on yourself. Because I was so intimidated that we were playing midway. They never lose. They go to the World Series every year. And this blonde chick that can throw harder, I just it was like, please just don't hit me, right? I, I was so scared. And I think about that like as an adult, we need to face those times and those, those things in our lives head on, head on. You have got to know you are where you are for a reason. You are exactly where you are meant to be and it is teaching you something. It is prepping you for your next level. But if you put your head down and you close your eyes and you don't even swing the bat, you'll never hit the ball. There wasn't even a chance I was gonna get a hit right? My eyes were closed. I was just trying not to pee on myself. There's not a chance you will ever knock it out of the park. And I want you to think about this in relation to your business. If your head is down because you were told no, if your head is down because you are frustrated, if your head is down, you're missing that next yes. You are missing that next person. You are missing that next opportunity to talk to someone that needs this, okay? Um, you're focusing on the negative instead of focusing on, okay, I swung and a missed. Am I going to get up next 
Am I going to get up next to bat? And you've got to view life that way. Life is ugly. Life is ugly. Life knocks you down. Shit happens. It's not fair. Uh, people, it comes in all shapes and sizes and forms. And I don't want to say it's the devil because I've learned that it's not the devil's work. And sometimes it's God's work and we don't know why, but what you do with that, what are you going to do with that? I will talk to you about last month for a minute. Last month sucked for a lot of people. For some of you, you were on fire. Um, you hit ranks that you've never hit before, but I know personally there was a lot of people on our team that were down on themselves, that were doubting themselves. And if it wasn't you, it will be you one day because that's just how life is with this industry, right? You're on top of the world one minute and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm going to use Shelby for an example. Shelby gets up, someone's broken into her account, stolen all of her money, has a mortgage in her name, and now her student loans aren't being approved for nursing school, right? And then she gets a call about her father. And I'm not going to go into detail about all that. But, like, right after coming off of a high, it's how we respond. It's how we respond. We have people on here that have experienced death. We've had people on here that have experienced illness. But all of these trials and tribulations in your life are prepping you for the next level. They are, I feel like personally, they are prepping you to help somebody else that's going to be in your situation one day. Um, because whether or not you feel like you're strong enough, there's a reason why God is going to use you as a vessel for something else. Okay. I'm going to talk to you about one more story. Sorry. I'm just super fired up because I have gotten so many messages from girls that are like from one extreme to the other. They're either like I'm on top of the world or they're like down on themselves. And I know at any moment that can flip in this industry, right? You're going to either be like on top of the world or you're going to be doubting yourself. That is just how this goes. And I want you to know that's normal. So I want to take you to another time in my life where um, this happened to me and it's actually a time that I chose to see the good in the situation and it's funny looking back now um, Good happened bad happened and then boom here. I am now. Okay, so I was going for a job and um, I wasn't ready for this job and This is what I mean by like I learned a lesson. So follow me here. I was going for this job and I got an interview for it and to even get an interview for it was very um, much a political move where I was. You got an interview if they liked you and you were cute, period, period, end of story. I got an interview for this job. I was a behavior specialist at the time and I got put with this kid and it was me and my very best friend. We both were in this room with this kid and it was going to be for the rest of the school year. Okay. So I get a call and I get a job to interview for an assistant principal. And I go in to work the next day and I tell my very, she's still my best friend, the one I took to New York. And I was like, I freaking got a call. I got a call for that job at Willow Creek for that assistant principal. And her face goes like, she is 10 years older than me. And she had been stuck in the same job for years and she was miserable. And she looked at me and she started crying and I said, what's wrong? And she goes, I got a call too. And I'm like, okay. So we go and we interview. Um, there's five of us. Three of us get called back. Me, her, and another girl. My best friend, she was my mentor for a whole year, okay? And I wanted that job so bad. I was like 30, 31, high on life, thought my shit didn't stink. I wanted that job. And I will never remember, we were in this room for eight hours every day together. I remember going, we both went to our interview. We talked about it. It was a little awkward. I remember going back into work the next day and I hadn't got a call back and she walks in that morning and we're there with this kid and she just starts bawling. And I'm like, what's wrong? And she's like, I got the job. And I said, she goes, I have to go. Like her last step was to interview with the school board. And I was like, well, what are you going to wear? And she looked at me and she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, what do you, we, we got to pick you out an outfit. Like, what are you going to wear? And she's like, seriously? And I'm like, yes. And I wasn't mad and I wasn't resentful. It wasn't my time. 
it wasn't my time y'all and I, I look back on that and I don't say that bragging I say that very humbly because I am a very um I'll just say it I'm probably a pretty jealous person and I try very hard to like get that out of my head and the comparison game and that was a moment that I can look back and think like God used me to give her enough courage. That was the first time she had ever applied for a different job in 10 years. And it wasn't my turn. And I immediately got another interview, immediately got a job that I got fired from and all hell broke loose. Right. But guess what? That's still my best friend. She's a badass assistant principal. She is leading a school. She is changing so many lives. And look at where I am now. I got to take her to New York, bless her, spoil her, and I gave her the courage. She looked at me and she said, you gave me the courage for change. I would have been stuck in a job I hated for the rest of my life. That is her passion. That is where she belongs. But I look, I look at that situation and I think of it in this industry. Like, if it's not your time and it's somebody else's time, that's okay that's okay. If somebody else is going faster than you, that's okay. You are right where you are supposed to be. You are an example for the people you are supposed to be an example for. And I am so grateful that I look back at that situation because to this day, she is the person that I can call whenever I've had a rough day that will be here in five minutes. That if my kid has lice, she's over here picking it out of my daughter's hair. The one that is, you know, taking my kids when my mom's in the hospital and I've got to go to Tahiti in two days. And there are so many things in life where you may think you're getting knocked down and you're actually not. So I want you to zoom out um, of the mirror, if you will, and start looking out the window. Too many of us get stuck looking in the mirror. And going, me, 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 me. When you do that, you are missing an opportunity to change other people's lives. Your paycheck will grow. If you're only looking in your bank account, that's not okay. If that's the place you're going is every Tuesday and looking at your commissions, and that determines your mood, trust me when I tell you, God will never help you level up. Because that's not what it's about. Go and look out your window. Whose life can you change? Who can you go bless? When you stop focusing on me and you start focusing on who can I go and serve, that's when everything changes. That's when your life changes. That's when the game changes. That's when your team changes. That's when everything changes. But if you're checking your bank account and you're checking your deposits every Tuesday and that determines your mood, or if you're checking your enrollments and that determines your mood and how you interact with people and whether or not you're getting in your own head or not, I'm not telling you you're wrong. What I'm telling you is break that cycle, break that habit. There are going to be days, there are going to be weeks, there are going to be months that suck in life. But how you respond is going to determine your next level. How you respond is going to determine where you go next. When you get knocked down, it's if you get up, right? So. July is over with. For some of you, it sucked. For some of you, it different. It didn't. Um, it's over with. Today is a new day. It is a new chapter. And you get to decide what you duplicate. Like I started this Zoom by saying everything you do is contagious. Your facial expressions, the way you talk to people, the way you make people feel, the way you talk to yourself, everything you do is contagious. Decide right now. Right now, what kind of person are you going to be? Because people are watching. People are watching you. People, if you are in this for the long haul, you haven't even met 10 people that are going to be millionaires on your team. You may think I'm crazy for saying that. Watch. Sit and watch. If you don't believe it, you better start. You don't even know the people yet whose lives you're going to get to go and change, the moms you're going to get to bring home. I didn't know Kat Coker five months ago, and she put in her two weeks at her job, and she gets to be a full-time mama now. I didn't know the 50 girls she's brought in. They're all from my hometown, right? You never know who needs this. And I say that not because I needed her or not because I needed them because they need this and they are going and they are running like their hair is on fire looking for the next person, not to help them. They're looking for the next person to help. And their whole attitude of their team is 
and I'm just I'm just speaking to this team, not saying this isn't true about other teams, but because I've been very involved in that team because it is girls from my hometown and I just got to meet them. The sisterhood that they have is so contagious and they are like excited doing cartwheels that somebody sent out three, uh, you know, three day samples. They're celebrating everything together because they're so laser focused on the positive. I challenge you. I know it gets rough. I, this is, I think tomorrow or the next day is my year anniversary with this company. It is tough to put on your positive pants every day, but I'll tell you what, damn it. It's also a choice. It is a choice. It, it's tough, but it's a choice and you get to decide. You get to decide every person you interact with, how you treat them. You get to decide every single person that you meet that's new old every person you'll meet in the future you get to decide if you leave them a better person or not they get to decide if they need this okay so when you're on your social media when you are going through your day don't get stuck in your mind about what you need get stuck in your mind who needs this who could benefit from this because those are going to be the people that are standing beside you on the stage when you get your millionaire plaque those are going to be the girls that will uh, knock down brick walls for you i stood up at la fiesta the other night and i told this group of women and i didn't know if i would be able to say this or not because i didn't know them but once i met them and could tell their culture i said y'all need to move six thousand dollars in the next three days i couldn't say that to just any team and they all looked at me and they're like, okay. And they made it happen. Why? Because that culture is there, that positivity, they're duplicating that positive, that energy, that's all duplicatable. So everything you do is contagious. Everything you do is duplicatable. You have to decide what you are giving the world to duplicate, right? Because misery loves company. Misery loves company, right? I'm not telling you you can't have bad feelings. I'm not telling you that you can't have a bad day. What I'm telling you is if you have a bad day, call somebody positive. Don't post on Facebook who else is tired or, oh, my God, don't go and look for a pity party. You need an accountability partner that's going to bring you up when you're low. You are going to need somebody like that can go. You're going to need a Leanne that can go and and you can say i'm on my way to a doctor's appointment i need you to pray over me you're gonna need somebody like um i think it was tracy and stephanie that put together a basket for someone who had just gotten out of the hospital you're gonna need uh an ashley russell's team who can come together and raise a thousand dollars from her for her in a matter of minutes when her son is born unexpectedly and in the NICU, you're going to need someone that can lift you up. Okay. I want you to put yourself in that situation and be, make sure you're that person for your teammates, because that's what we need more of in life on this journey. And, and, and in just in life in general, as a friend to other people, um, are you that person? Are you that person? If not, take a long, hard look in the mirror and then start looking out the window. Are you that ray of sunshine? Are you that person? It doesn't mean you're perfect. It doesn't mean you don't cry. That's not what that means. But what it means is you're stronger than anything that's thrown at you and you choose to wear positive pants every day. You choose to put on your positive pants instead of your negative ones. And it's a choice. And some days, y'all, it is so tough. I get it. But stop and think about what a blessing it is to have this industry. What a blessing it is. Like, I used to be embarrassed. I used to tell people, and I've told you all this, like, you know, like, like Avon, like, that's what I do. Like, y'all know, did your mom ever like buy Avon? That's kind of like what I do. No, hell no. Now I tell people, um, my team is a multi-million dollar team and I work from my cell phone and I have teachers, nurses, stay at home moms, dental assistants, salon owners, boutique owners. Like I got them all. Like I'm proud of what, what I have. I'm proud of our culture. Be proud of that. Be proud of the piece of this that you have, because what we have is something so super special. Um, and I just challenge you. I challenge you to choose the positive road. I challenge you to choose to see things um, through positive eyes, because it's so easy to get down. It's so easy to see the negative. 
So I will stop harping on that. That is my message for y'all. Um, there was a couple of other things, hold on, that I want to talk to y'all about. Um, are you leading from the front? Are you truly leading from the front? And, and what I mean by that is, are you, if you're frustrated, I want you to stop and ask yourself. A lot of times people will come to me and they'll say, I'm frustrated because I don't have a team. I'm frustrated with my team. And I'm like, well, I have a lot of people that quit on me and I have a lot of people that don't meet their potential and my paychecks are still good, right? Because I'm still changing lives. So when I say head down, blinders on and focus, I can't express that enough to you to be looking for the next life to change and to be taking anyone with you that wants to go. But the people that don't, it doesn't matter if they are on your team and they are Miss Texas and they have a following of 600 million people on Instagram. If they don't want this, they will never sign a customer, period. It doesn't matter. So lead from the front. Don't keep looking back at the what, what ifs, but ifs, could have been, it doesn't matter y'all. There are people in this industry that um, are recovering heroin addicts. There are people on our team, multiple people that have felonies. There are multiple people that are single moms, raising five kids, um, single dads on our team. Y'all, it doesn't matter. Don't get caught up in the, um, <laughs> Marianne has manic depression. Like I have severe anxiety and depression. Like we all have our demons, right? That's what makes this so beautiful. Don't get caught up, not leading from the front because you get frustrated. You keep putting one foot in front of the other and doing what you know how to do. Um, people will follow. People will follow you. Are you plugged in? Guys, I can't say it enough. If you're not plugged in and you're not excited, your team's not going to be excited period. It's just there. It's going to be very rare there. You're going to attract people that aren't excited. And that is who's going to join you, right? You have to stay excited. You have to stay motivated. You have to, and it's self-motivation. If the comp plan and changing people's lives don't, um, don't motivate you, Danielle, you're autistic. I had no idea. Oh my God. That's so cool. Like, I'm sorry, my degrees are all in special education and that was my first love is I met a child with autism and that's why, how I got where I am. Like, how freaking cool. Um, wow, that's awesome. So, just head down and know, like, you might not be where you think you should be. You might not be where you want to be, but you're right where you ought to be, right? And it could be because you're holding yourself back or you're not ready for the next level or but just own it. Own that. Be okay with where you are. Um, okay, so for the trip and the contest, I'm going to be completely transparent right now. Um, I, I was very frustrated and very disappointed that a lot of people didn't turn in their point sheets for the beach house, but I also know that this isn't about me. This is about the people that do want to come, that do want to hang out, that do want to have four days of spoiling. And it is for only for four Ks and above. And I have to know that. And if it turns out that that's not 19 people, then I will fill the spots accordingly. But I'm not going to beg for point sheets to be turned in anymore. I will tell you right now, it is 735. And at 10 p.m. tonight, you will be receiving... Um, that's the cutoff. So if you have not turned it in, I'm, I'm going to just say this. There are 80 K's that haven't turned it in 40 K's, 12 K's that I know wanted to go. I can't beg you to turn in your point sheets because I'm going to sit and cry because I have anxiety. That is just me as your leader telling you that because I like, that's me going, but God, she's going to earn it. I want her to go so bad. I can't do that. I can't do it. It's like me looking at someone going, God, they would rock this business. Um, if they would just join, it's the same damn thing. Like I can't do it. I have to get over myself and I just can't take it personal. Okay. I'm asking you if you are still interested. I don't give a shit if you earned 50 points or six 
100 points, please turn in your sheet to me via email. The instructions are on the team page. You're going to have to go look it up, y'all. I've spent a lot of money. This whole trip, when it's said and done, I will be spending over $10,000 on y'all. This is not something I take lightly when I go and I spoil my team. Please, please turn them in. I'm not running it through the rest of August. I'm done. I know that I had said it was going to go through mid-August. I'm done. I begged for point sheets. I have eaten myself alive about it. I'm done. I am just being transparent with you as your leader. I will do things a little different next time I run a contest, but I'm done. I will take point sheets from June and July. You have until 10 p.m. to get them to me. Don't count yourself out. I also um, am going to run a contest to help with airfare. I get you may not know how to get there. Y'all, we'll figure it out. Like you talk to me, y'all. Um, you don't want to miss it, but I cannot beg you to want to be there. All I can do is tell you that I love you and I want to spoil you and I want to be able to do this with you. Um, and, and it's it, and I do feel like it comes down to a form of respect. Like I'm trying so hard to plan all of this for y'all. Please respect me and my family and our time. Like even Jay's having to get a babysitter because he had something that weekend. Like I, I'm doing something super cool for y'all. And whenever I sit there and I'm like, don't even have 19 point sheets turned in at five, like I will start crying and have a mental breakdown. Cause I'm like, I don't get it, but that's just me. So I, um, I am moving forward and I'm announcing it tonight. Y'all, I hope that, um, not for me, but I hope for you that if you do earn it and you do get that message from me, I need to know immediately if you can't go. And it's okay if you can't go. I understand there are teachers that can't go. Cabo's a few weeks. Like, I, I get it. Like, you're not going to hurt my feelings. And that's even leading from the front. If you can't go, don't you still want your name on that spreadsheet? Don't you still want your team to see that you're leading from the front? For my my leaders that have big teams, um, what I, I – like, I if when I earned a trip like this whenever I was in my last gig – like we blasted it all over social media. I'm like, I'm going on a paid for vacation with like my top leader, one of the top leaders in the company, like, and she's going to get to spoil me. Hell yeah. I was grateful. I was excited. You know, I'm not telling you to be excited because I'm cool. What I'm saying is it's going to be fun. Be proud of it. And I hope that if you earn it, you're proud enough of yourself to post about it to be proud enough to shout yourself out and say, look what I've done, because it is a feat. It is, there are 40, I don't know the exact number, but I know we have over 4,200 people on this team. That's a lot of damn people. If you earn a spot on this trip, that's something to be proud of. Um, so I'm cutting it off tonight. It's for June and July. I will send you a graphic to post. If you have earned it, I will post in the team page before I go to bed tonight that you have earned, uh, who has earned it. If you can't go, let me know immediately so I can follow up with the next person. Um, please check your emails if you have turned it in and make sure I either emailed you back, got it, or a question because some of them I had questions on. Um, our next giveaway so what we're doing, oh crap, okay, I'm running out of time, sorry. Let me, I want to hit one more thing. This is super important. Your credits are going to load tomorrow, right? And everyone's going to be like, woohoo, I have like $100 in credits. Please be smart, okay? Be smart. I want to talk to you about two things. If you need products, that's one thing. If you are giving away product credits, be smart. I know like in between me and Jay's account, I have 638 credits. I am not going to go, I have 638 credits to use. People say, how do you advertise um, like the pure that's free right now? I don't. I leverage and I talk to people individually. So like today I was talking to a girl, right? And she's like, I'm interested in patches. And I immediately... I now I have her in a conversation and I'm like, okay, awesome. What is your goal? Well, my goal is to lose 20 or 30 pounds. And I said, I'm going to be honest with you right now. I don't want, I could get a sale and sell you $50 in patches. And I lost the sale. I'll be totally transparent with you, but I know she'll come back around. I said, um, 
you're, you're not going to get the res You're not going to lose 30 pounds on patches. It's a three step system. I explained the system to her and she's like, well, I don't have that much money. And I, I have DFT. So I said, you know what, if you'll do pay for steps one and two, I'll cover step three. Um, she's like, okay, let me think about it. And then she's like, Hey, I'm going to come back to you at a different time. But I leveraged with her. I'm not going to be like, Oh, well, I have 638 credits. Let me just pay for your shit. Right. I also, I'm not going to set her up to, for failure and not to be a long-term customer and be like, just get $50 DFT so I can make $5, $10. Like, no, I'm not. That's not why I'm in this. I'm in this. She was like telling me how she's tired of looking in the mirror. Her mom has told her she's overweight and all this stuff. Be smart in what you leverage with. Start with $20 off. Start with um, $15 off. I'll cover your shipping. Know who you're talking to, but do not go on your Facebook and say, I have $600 in credits. I am going to take $50 off the next 12 orders. What if someone needs $60 off? What if someone just needed you to give them $20? Okay, furthermore, don't go on there and say, new customers, order $150 and I'll give you pure for free. Like, I'm going to go back and message her and I'm going to go, hey, I just wanted to let you know, I also, if you do want to try this, now I have leverage, right? She's established in need. I know what she, her goals are, and I know what I'm working with. I'm going to go back and tell her. So I was telling her, like, if you do the $140, I'll cover your DFTs. I can go back and tell her, like, I know I have free DFTs. I know I have credits. I can say, you know what? I can take another $40 off, and I can also get you pure. Or I don't know how I'll flip it because it needs to be a $150 order for a free pure. But do you see what I'm saying? Like, that's how my brain works. It doesn't work of taking a screenshot of the email that the company sends us and posting it. That's spam. That is an ad. And that's not network marketing. That's not attraction marketing. It is using that as a tool to close people whether it's your credits, whether it's a sale that the company has going on. So like sometimes they may do buy one, get one free. You could post like you am holding DFTs. This is just like an example, not what we're doing right now. And you could say free DFTs, message me for deets. Then you tell them the details. Then you say, it's buy one, get one free, but you don't post buy one, get one free. Like then you're an ad. You see what I'm saying? Um, Shelby, a girl asked me today, she said, well, if you're not blasting the products, how do people know? And I'm like, that's the thing. They don't. That's why they're in my inbox. That's why they're messaging me. That's why I can have conversations because I'm not just throwing a post up. There are so many times I just want to throw a post up, right? Like I want to just, I get really excited today. I wrote three posts in uh, laying in the bed that weren't appropriate for today. But I have them. Um, so any not, it was Shelby Schilling. I don't know. It was Shelby Schilling and me were talking about it. Yes. So I always tell, thank you, Julia. I always say it's like going out on a date and just like, hi, I'm crazy. Here are all my strengths. Here are all my weaknesses. And here I am naked, right? Like, no, don't do that. They're not going to call you again. They're not going to talk to you. Give people a reason to continue talking to you. Now I have a reason to talk to this girl. I haven't exhausted all of my resources. I haven't used all of my leverage. I can go and get in this girl's inbox tomorrow and I can offer her maybe hey, free shipping, or hey, if you do this, I can do this. I can leverage with people. Be smart when you get your credits. I just see so many times people like a blanket statement of I have credits and this is what I'll give to everyone, but not everyone needs the same thing. Because if you say I'll give you $50 off, well, what if they come to you and say, awesome, I want DFTs and they're $50. Or what if someone came to you and said, oh, awesome, I want three steps plus balance. Like, you, you wanna know what you're working with before you start leveraging with people, okay? Um, let me know if that makes sense. Um, let me know what questions you have on that. We are going to roll something out new this month where we are gonna go live every single day on the team page and teach you something. Whether or not you get on there is up to you. 
It's not mandatory. Nothing is, but we're going to teach you something. Um, Stephanie and I have started planning it and we have posted the schedule so far. I don't know what time it'll be alive. So you can go back and watch it at your convenience. It's going to be all sorts of things. If you have anything you're struggling with, if you have anything that you need, that's a place to go and post it. And we will address it in a live video and teach you whether it be picture editing, whether it be how to leverage. I was like, Oh, I need to teach them how to leverage with their credits before credits hit their account on the second. Um, whether it be VIP 800 and 1600, whatever that is that you need help with, um, post it in there and we will make sure we cover that in a live video training. Instead of doing work with me, some of you may not know what that is because we used to do those where you get on a Zoom like this and we work at a certain time and we didn't record them. We're just going to do a Facebook live work with me um, every day so you can go back and catch the replay, but it's up to you. The tools and resources will be there. It's up to you to pick them up. We're also doing four giveaways this yeah. month. They will run until Saturdays. So it's going to start today and Steph is going to put a graphic up in just a little bit and it will end on Saturday. Then we will announce the winner on Sunday's team huddle and we will immediately roll something else out. Okay. We're going to do four of those. The first one is a ring light. Um, let me tell you how you earn that. Different teams may be doing different things too. What I will tell you as a leader to a leader, do not overcomplicate it. Being able to duplicate is what's most important. Don't come up with 20 different contests. Let us do that for you, please. If not, people are so confused. Um, Steph, I'm looking for your message. Okay. So you're going to get one entry for a new customer, one entry for a promoter on a pack, and four entries if you are a promoter and you run your auto shipment on the 5th. You can use credits for that. Okay? You are going to list them underneath. Do not list multiple comments. So let's say you get a customer. Say, um, so Lauren Folk. One customer, one point. She gets a promoter. She's going to go back and edit her comment. Okay. One customer, one point, one promoter, one point. Then she runs an auto shipment. She's going to go back and edit that. Okay. That's where you're going to list it underneath that graphic. We will draw for it next Sunday. We have some really exciting things. Um, really exciting things to give away from cash to designer things to Apple things. Like I'm super duper pumped and excited about that. Um, I think that's all. Sorry. Y'all know I'm a squirrel and I'm like all over the place. I am super excited about this month. I'm just challenging you. Please, please, please. No matter what last month looks like for you, put on your positive pants, go out and change the damn world with me this month. I will tell you, like I told someone earlier, I saw a lot of people struggle last month. My paycheck didn't struggle last month. Okay. I chose to get up every day and be positive. I didn't requalify for 200 K until like the last day of the month. Okay. Stephanie, who's under me, requalified way before me. It didn't matter. I either could face fear and go and get the shit done or not. My paychecks didn't suffer because I didn't get so head down in my feelings. I looked up and I went and enrolled people. So my point in telling you all of this is not because I am your leader and I want my paycheck to grow. We're good. We're debt free. We're making five figures a week. I want you to know what that feels like. I want you to know what an $18,000 a week paycheck feels like because you're worthy and you're capable of it. But if you get in your own damn way, it'll never happen. It will never happen. This is my three year journey. I think tomorrow makes three years. I'm going to look it up in the computer. This is my three year journey. Do not compare yourself to me. Let my journey inspire you. Let other leaders journey inspire you. Stephanie, 4.5 years. Let these people inspire your next move. Don't let them discourage you because you're not there yet. You're right where you ought to be, but you've got to keep going one foot in front of the other positive pants on and it will happen. I promise you it will happen. If you believe and you keep going forward, you never know 
the next person you're going to sign that needs this so bad that they're going to knock down brick walls to make it happen. And they are going to be the next Lavelle millionaire. Because I promise you, I promise you by my two year anniversary in this company, I will be a Lavelle millionaire. I promise you it is not because I'm a unicorn. It is not because I even have deodorant on right now. It's not because I brush my teeth in the morning. I am a hot mess express that refuses to quit. I'm a hot mess that hears no and it and it's me going, I've got to get back up to bat. I've got to get back up to bat. I've got to get my head in the game and I've got to go find somebody else that needs this. I challenge you every day this month, push yourself to see the positive. If you for one minute get negative, check yourself, okay? Pour into yourself, pour into your soul, and make yourself the best version possible because you deserve it, your family deserves it, and the world deserves the best version of you. I love y'all. Let's go kill this month, and I cannot wait to check my email, finish up updating these point sheets. By 10 o'clock, I'm done, over with, and I will know the 19 people who I get to spoil the shit out of. I know I've told you all this before, but I'm really excited because there's an elevator in the damn house, okay? I don't know why. That just really makes me so excited, but I love y'all. There's a swimming pool. It's right by the beach, and I am so excited to spoil 19 of y'all. I will talk to y'all soon. Love you. Bye.